Why can't I get over it? Moving past trauma. Hi guys, welcome to today's Spiritual Candy podcast. So today I want to talk about trauma um, and how it might be affecting you, how it affected me in my life and how to deal with it. This is a big thing. Loads of people come to me saying, why can't I get over it? Why have I got this trauma? How do I move past this trauma? They come and ask the guides. They sometimes email me and ask me. Um, You may have emailed me and asked me. You may have had a reading about it. So let's talk about it today in today's podcast. I want to start this with an obvious disclaimer. I'm not a therapist or a trained professional in the area of trauma or anything else for that matter. Uh, So what are my credentials for those of you who don't know me? So I have a master's degree in the philosophy of mind. Um, I'm an empathic intuitive and I've done hundreds of readings around the topic of trauma and dealing with trauma and heartache. But perhaps most importantly, I get what it's like to have mental health issues or to have a nervous collapse or a breakdown. Um, I have a lot of experience of living with these issues myself and having loved ones with these issues. So there, that's my experience and expertise. In other words, I am not an expert. (laughs) I'm not a trained expert at all. Um, And obviously, if you are experiencing any mental or health concerns, you should absolutely visit your doctor or or consult a trained professional, of course. However, this is not to say that I don't want to help you or that I can't. Just please see me as a friend, not a therapist. Okay, now that's out the way, let's get down to it. Um, So I'm going to read you a, a paraphrased quote here. It's very complex and will take a lot of working on. Perhaps it will never go entirely, but we can work on making it more manageable. So this is a paraphrased quote that I have heard fly from the mouths of three separate therapists regarding me and my mental health. They all said it in slightly different ways, but it was roughly the same idea. They told me it would take a long time to deal with my mental health situation and it would be complicated. When I did training for EFT, um, emotional freedom technique, they kept, they said, during the training, keep tapping until all your issues are cleaned up. (laughs) And I was like, hello, I'll never do anything else when I heard that. (laughs) Um, But the point is, it's not true. Um, This idea that that it was very complex and will take a lot of working on. It wasn't true. And I'm here to somewhat debunk the myth Because if this has happened to me, it will have happened to somebody else. This idea that you've been told by many trained professionals, you know, regarding mental health issues, regarding old trauma, that it's really, really complex, it's really difficult, and that, you know, it's going to take a long time to deal with, if you ever can fully deal with it, you know. Um, I can only tell you about my experience here, and perhaps it will be different from you, but... Since we are all, as human beings, remarkably similar, perhaps you might consider that some of my experience might correlate or may correlate to your world and your life too, yeah? I want to debunk the myth that so-called trauma and difficulty is some sort of endless painful drag that leaves you blighted for all of eternity, Now, (laughs) I do get it. I'm sticking my neck out here and I will get a lot of criticism, I'm sure, if anyone listens to this podcast. Um, But I really don't care. Because to be honest with you, I wish I'd read this when I was grappling with my breakdowns. And I want to pass this well-kept secret along. And I do feel like to some extent it is a bit of a secret. If you dig about or you listen with an open heart and mind in the spiritual Um, community, to people like Eckhart Tolle, to people like Michael Singer, to people like even things like Abraham Hicks, um, to things like Dr. Joe Dispenza. If you listen with an open heart and mind, you will recognise that perhaps what mainstream um, advice would tell you is perhaps not always the case, you know, that maybe you can heal something more simply than they say. Um, But it's, 
it's not something that I found readily available, you know, that information. So I'm hoping that um, whilst I do think people will, if it's listened too much, this will get criticism. I think it will help one or two people, hopefully. And if it does, that is my aim. So I do not dispute or doubt that lots of trauma benefits from mental health intervention, either pharmaceutical or therapy. I absolutely support all forms of intervention when it comes to dealing with past trauma. I have had past trauma. I have had um, pharmaceutical and therapy intervention at times in my life, and I have benefited from both. So that that is without you know any sort of hesitation. I totally support that. However, I also want to tell you that I've benefited from sometimes seeing past the idea that I have unresolved trauma that cannot be easily healed or dealt with. You know, I live to tell the tale that it can and how it can. So, you know, if you're at a position where you've got like a um, an unresolved or you feel somewhat still debilitated or disabled in some way by a past trauma that doesn't seem to fully have healed you know you still can't fully get over it and you've had the interventions you know uh, this is what I want to talk to you about today because uh, it's my experience that we can move past it so let's talk about it um I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't have medical intervention. That's what I really want to make clear for mental health problems or that what I'm suggesting is an alternative. I'm suggesting that there are many extra things that you can do that might shift a lot of the so-called unresolved issues regarding trauma that you may be having. So to start with, I want to talk to you about secondary pain. Let me explain what I mean by this. I think I came up with this term to label the mental chatter and the thoughts we have about things that go wrong in our lives. But I could have heard it somewhere else. I'm not sure. But I call it secondary pain. So let me explain. So we fall over and hurt our knee. The primary pain is the painful knee. The secondary pain is the shame of people seeing us fall, the irritation that we're so clumsy, the fear that it might get infected, and it's all the replaying of it in our heads with all this sort of unhelpful commentary. So secondary pain is not necessary and doesn't actually come from the initial problem we might be having. It comes from our thoughts and beliefs about the thing that has happened. So someone breaks up with us. We feel the primary pain of loss and sadness but then we have the secondary pain of all the internal chat. What should I have done differently? Why did it happen? Shame, guilt, and lots of other stories, yeah? Don't get me wrong. Emotional loss and injury is more difficult to differentiate between primary and secondary pain than it is with physical injury, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a precise science. All I really want you to see is that in every case when we experience any sort of trauma, we have the initial trauma and then we have the secondary trauma, which is self-induced by our thoughts about the primary trauma. I'm just going to say that bit again. All I want you to see is that in every case, when we experience any sort of trauma, we have the initial trauma and then we have secondary trauma, which is self-induced by our thoughts about the primary trauma. If we could stop the secondary trauma, that may get rid of a lot of the problems instantly. Now, that could be easier said than done, but recognizing what's going on and starting to jump in and interrupt your own thoughts is going to be super helpful when it comes to moving past trauma and getting over it. How to stop your thoughts and the chat in your head is a massive area and something people such as Michael Singer with The Untethered Soul and Eckhart Tolle in The Power of Now have spent their whole careers talking about. I can't go into this in great detail here, although I may make a future podcast about it. Um, 
and but you know they do so much better than i can anyway in explaining it so um of course go and check them out but what i do want you to see is that the voice inside that chats in a fearful and negative way is one of your biggest obstacles to letting it go and the thing is that we'll talk about this more in a minute um this voice in your head is not you if you notice that you're watching the voice in your head you're listening to the voice in your head so you may feel worried about this voice but you're not alone everyone has this inner critic or fear monger who chats incessantly it's not really even in a way it's not really even your mind it's just mind in inverted commas that you're plugging into so human consciousness if you like you know like have you ever said i'm so fed up with myself if you have you can see the fact that there is the real you watching the other you who you are fed up with the you who is always watching is the real you the one who is full of drama is not really you, but your personality and mental noise. So like I said, I don't have the time or space to say much about it here. But as I said before, I urge you to check out Eckhart Tolle's YouTube channel and start learning about how the voice in our heads is perhaps the biggest barrier to moving past trauma. So um, check the link out. I will leave a link to Eckhart Tolle's YouTube channel in uh the description below so the thing to see is that our minds don't always tell the truth in fact if your mind's anything like my mind my fearful chatter almost never tells the truth pay attention it talks negatively all the time it makes things up it jumps to conclusions and warns you constantly about things that almost never happen. You know, it's, you, it's so important to step back and reflect. Your mind is not a reliable source of information and generally makes us quite unsettled at best. It is the voice that is creating all of this secondary pain. So what are the reasons why it does this? Right, again, that's a massive area <laughs> and we can't get into it here. It's too long to answer, um, but just see that it's not to be trusted or listened to without question. That's not saying to swing the pendulum right to the other side and say, oh, our minds never have anything helpful to say. Well, clearly that's not true. Um, but to understand that not every thought you have is the truth or telling you something that's helpful. You know, most of the times our minds are telling us something about something that's already happened or that we are worried may happen. You know, it's not happening now. Um, but our bodies don't know the difference between an imagined event and a real one. So every time we allow our minds to run into the past or the future to some sort of horrible event, we are literally repeating our trauma or traumatizing ourselves if it's something that hasn't happened yet. So I do agree that when you have experienced something terrible, there is plenty of evidence that it needs to be heard, processed, and sometimes actions need to be taken. That is a given. But what happens when, like with me, you have talked about it already? You've had the therapy, you've done the tapping and the meditations and it's still as annoying as heck and it hasn't gone. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. Here's what I did. When your head chirps up with some fearful thoughts, ask yourself the following things. Is it true? Sometimes the mind lies. And the biggest problem is that you have a habit of listening. As soon as you start questioning your thoughts and asking yourself, is this true? Can I let it go? Then you can do so. And, and this can sometimes like eradicate a huge amount of the issues that you've been having. The next point is, is it happening now? It usually isn't. You know, when I say, is it happening now? You know, if your head chirps up with some 
fearful thought or some scary vision or some horrible emotion. You can look around you. Is the problem happening now? It usually isn't. We're nearly always either lamenting over the past or a potential future. So that's the next thing to notice. And notice it's not happening now, which then feeds into the, is it true? You know, it's not happening now. So it's not true. The next thing to ask yourself, am I being seduced by my mind? This was a big one for me. Are you being convinced by your mind's thoughts about your thoughts? <laughs> Now, before you're like, what? What's she on about? I know it sounds complicated, but stay with me. So let me explain. You have a thought, for example, I am scared. Then you have more thoughts about being scared, such as you see, you'll never get over it. You've been scared for so long now. It's just the way you are, etc., etc. So your mind can play many roles at one time. Listen to that again. Your mind can and does play many roles at one time. So it can convince you that one of the more, in inverted commas, sensible voices is the real you. But notice carefully that your true self is just back there watching the circus unfold. So that's what I mean by you're being seduced by your mind. Your mind can play all these different characters and kind of have you in knots so you feel overwhelmed and you feel out of control. So Kat, what's the solution you may be saying? Well, basically, stop thinking. That's the solution. Stop thinking. <laughs> so, okay, we can't do that. Also, we don't want to, but we do need, still need to think about things, don't we? You know, like... It's all right saying, well, I need to stop my mind. I need to stop thinking all the time. But we do need to think because we have to think about picking the kids up or changing the filter or catching a plane. You know, we have practical things to think about. But we don't need to think all of the time or follow and believe every thought. That's revolutionary. If you can really take that on board and start you don't have to watch it every single thought and it would be impossible. But just whenever you get, whenever it, you remember, just notice, what am I thinking now? And you'll see that you've got all these bad habits of thinking certain things and then following each thought. So let's talk about the solutions. So the solutions I put in place in my life are as follows. Number one, don't believe your fearful thoughts. So we talked about this already. When something comes up, check if it's true or needs your attention. Once you've established that it doesn't, let it go. And every time it comes up, just watch the thought and accept it. Perhaps it will dissolve. Perhaps it won't. But whatever, you're not believing it anymore, so it doesn't matter. Do, don't think just because the thought won't go away easily that this means you're somehow mistaken and perhaps it is true and perhaps you do need to think about it. That's the way your mind hooks you in so that you want to keep thinking about it and thinking about it because the mind kind of feeds on that anxiety and pain. You know, so you are going to have to be really disciplined. This is an important thing to mention. You know, I found in my life the biggest and help, most helpful thing to getting over trauma is you got to be really tough and resilient. You got to be really determined to get past it. And some of it, it, it sounds kind of counterintuitive in a way because it's like, oh, I need to like take care of myself. I need to love myself. And that's true. Um, but sometimes it's not actually like the being really cute and like listening to yourself. There's a place for that. But sometimes, you know, it's like saying, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. It's like tough love, you know. So um, not believing your fearful thoughts. And once you've established that it's not true, you have to say no. Every time your mind wants to think about it more, say no. So number two solution, take notice of the here and now. So when traumatized thoughts come up, you know, memories of the past or worries about it happening again in the future or something bad happening again in the future, 
Remember that you are respecting your thoughts, but you're not getting into them anymore. We don't want to push them down, ignore them, pretend they're not there or try and run away from them because that actually compounds and irritates the trauma more. We're going to allow them to be there, the thoughts, if they want to be there, but we're going to focus on the here and now and just leave them in the background. Yeah, we're not going to keep adding to their energy by either trying to force them down or trying to work them out. We're going to say, okay, those thoughts are just there and we're just going to leave them there. Number three for the solution, don't be scared of being scared. Once you can say that you accept feeling whatever it is, your old trauma, pain, fear, worry, anxiety, as soon as you can say, I accept feeling fearful, for example, it becomes less fearful. So once you say, I accept feeling in pain, it becomes less painful. Running and pushing against and being upset about being upset is often making up more of the trauma than you realize. This is a big one for me. You know, once I stopped being scared of being scared, you know, I spent a lot of the time worried that I was going to get scared, worried that I was going to get triggered. As soon as I accepted, well, yeah, I might get triggered. Okay, fine. Or I am triggered and I feel horrible. Okay. It took away so much of the trauma because a lot of the trauma was kind of like secondary, as we were saying at the beginning. So it was more my thoughts about what was happening. So number four solution. Stop thinking that having pains or problems makes you broken. This is such a horrible, horrible thing in um, Western society, in the world right now, there's this concept you know it's a lot of it's to do with marketing media social media this idea of you know the permanent smile and everything's airbrushed and everything's exciting and wonderful and everyone's everyone else is on this amazing adventure of life and here i am this broken person or this you know leading this dull existence and everybody else's life is so perfect the point is that this is just nonsense. It's not true. It's very unhelpful. And you need to understand that thinking that because you have some sort of darker side or darkness or difficulty or pain or problem that you are broken. No, you are. It doesn't make you broken. What it does is it makes you like me and like every other single person in the world. <laughs> there is no hero and victim. There are just people. We're all the same. We have dark and light. We have up times and down times. There is no rescuer on a white horse because no one is perfect and fallible. And some of this is like, a, sometimes we can kind of not mature into this idea. So when we're little children, we may, we may not. If we've, particularly if we've got trauma, we probably don't really think this, but it's worth mentioning anyway. We may look to our parents and think that, you know, there's someone who's really stable and really strong and that they're there for you no matter what and they don't have loads of issues. And that so we go out in the world as adults looking for a partner or a friend or a situation like that, that is perfect, that is as strong and that their issues are only really superficial or just a tiny, you know, little thing, you know, like, you know, they leave their socks on the floor or whatever. But it's just nonsense. Uh, because we're all the same. We're all uh, a mixture of the dark and the light, the up and the down. So this may disappoint your mind. Yeah, because the mind doesn't like that, the idea that there is no rescuer out there. But it will not sadden your spirit. You know, your spirit knows this already. Your soul knows this already. The good news is that you have no reason to feel ashamed or to be bitter. Because that's the other thing. We've got the shame that comes with, well, why am I broken and all these people on Instagram are not? Then we've got the other problem, which is then we get bitter because it's like, well, why is their life great and my life terrible? Why did they have a great, you know, mother and I didn't or whatever, you know? Um, 
but it, it it's not true. I mean, it, we all have different issues. We all have different, let's quote unquote, darkness, but we all have our portion of it. So you may feel broken, but you are not. And feeling broken and being broken are very different things. We can feel broken, but it doesn't mean we are broken. And this goes back to not believing everything your mind tells you as well. Um, what I want you to do is, like I said before about the mind watch, uh, the real you watching, notice how the real you is watching all of it going on. The real you, the person watching the situations, that real you in the background isn't broken or even feeling broken. That part of you just is. And the more you can recognize that part of you, as you keep noticing that part of you that's kind of stood in the background, always watching, that's kind of your inner wisdom, your higher self. There are many ways of explaining it. The real you, the spirit in you, the soul of you, whatever. The more you recognize that, the more you will start to identify with that part of you that's kind of always balanced and calm. So, you know, as a human being, we're not always balanced and calm because we've got this, this dualistic nature, but that soul part of you, that spiritual part of you, or that, that part of you in the background that's always watching has a sort of innate calmness about it. So the fifth solution is spend a lot of time doing what you want to do or focus on what you're doing in that moment. So get fully immersed in living in the here and now. Focus on the present moment. Keep busy, but not so busy that you're running about and you're stressing yourself out. When you have free time, fill it with things that make you laugh and smile. The sixth solution is keep a gratitude journal and spend five days, five minutes a day writing in it. So I usually do a few minutes in, a couple of minutes in the morning, a couple of minutes at night, just listing things you're grateful for, things that have gone well for you in your day, etc. If you still feel traumatized and can't get over it, what I'm asking you to do is consider the possibility that you have a bad habit going and you need to shift it. So this is another way of looking at trauma, yeah? That's really what I'm trying to say with those six solutions. It's about refocusing yourself. It's about reframing the way you're seeing the situation. You know, and like I said at the, at the beginning, the disclaimer, you know, I'm not saying don't get mental health support. I'm not saying don't take drugs or pharmaceuticals, you know, uh, prescribed pharmaceuticals. I'm not saying any of those things. But what I'm saying is if you've had the therapy and processed what happened, perhaps you're actually just stuck in an old way of being. That was the case for me. I'm sure there are lots of people out there who are the, in the same boat. So, and the thing to bear in mind is that when we think things over and over again, they become ingrained and habitual. You know, that's how we drive without thinking or we do two things at once and hold a conversation at the same time. We're on autopilot. So if you've been dealing with an old issue or trauma for many months or longer, perhaps being traumatized has actually just become a bad habit. So, you know, you've done the therapy, et cetera, but now it's like a habit that you think those thoughts or a habit that you behave in a certain way. And I'm not saying that's going to be the case for everyone. But if you've had the therapy, you're taking the medication or whatever, and you know really, well, why am I still doing this? Or why am I still being like this? It could be that like me, you are just in the habit of being that way. Um... It was just my experience, you know, don't shout at me if it's not, because it's not the case for everyone. But I really want to make this podcast today for those of you who have like an unresolved thing that just doesn't seem to go. You've done all the work on it. You've done the meditations, the hypnotherapy, the acupuncture, you know, you've done everything and it's still there. And you think, well, why is it still there? Um, you know, I had gotten used to feeling a certain way and thinking certain thoughts and so I had to make a massive change in the way I lived and reacted to my own mind in order to make the change. You know, in truth, my issues weren't still there because they were very complex, like the therapist had told me, although they may have been, I suppose, but they were there because I was in the habit of thinking them. 
That's the truth for me. You know, nevertheless, the trauma was very real. At the time, it was very, very real. And it reignited every time I replayed it in my mind. It made me feel trapped, traumatized and horrible. But after months of thinking differently by intercepting my thoughts and doing new things in different ways to create new habits, it started to change. It hasn't all gone, but it is enough to know that I'm onto something with this. You know, it, it's really made a massive difference. So does this mean that therapists, the therapists were wrong in saying that it was a lot to deal with and it would take a long time to work out? You know, I'm not qualified to say. What I am qualified to say is that Eckhart Tolle's explanations of the mind and how we tell ourselves lots of complicated stories really resonates with me and my old trauma. And it's become almost a mantra for me. So I'm always asking myself, is this real or is it a story I'm telling about the situation? You know, as a short term measure, if you are in a position where you still want to tell um, the story, if you still insist on listening to your mind and the stories and the thoughts that, and emotions that run through your mind all the time, at least tell yourself a better story. You know, don't make it into a terrible, gory story that convinces you that you simply must live your life as a wounded victim. So, you know, once you've done all the therapy and all the healing work, if the thoughts are still coming, try and reframe them and change them. You know, but it's even better if you can let the pain go, feel it, release it and stop telling yourself any stories at all. But like I said, just to finish off this podcast today, I do want to just make the point of saying that this is only my experience. I'm not an expert. I have no clinical information. I have no studies, nothing. All I'm telling you is this is what happened to me and maybe you would like to try it because it may work for you, okay? I want to recommend a few audios that really help me to heal and release my trauma. So I want to share these three audios with you. The first one was How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. I will link all of them in the description below. It's very old and was first printed in the UK in 1948, the book. So it is old, but despite its age, it continues to be both comforting and exhilarating when it comes to giving you a sense of camaraderie and support when dealing with getting over difficult things in your life. I absolutely love the audio book and I have it on Audible. The narrator's voice is amazing. It's so comforting. So the other one is Eckhart Tolle's YouTube channel. Take the time to watch a few hours of Eckhart Tolle clips on YouTube if you can. I know it's an investment of time, um, but I do not think you will be disappointed. His explanation of how the mind talks and tells us stories and how it seduces us is so on point. It might take you some time to get into. And if you are not going through a spiritual awakening, you know, if you're not a spiritual person, and I don't mean religious, I just mean spiritual. If you're not a spiritual person at all, you perhaps may find it doesn't resonate at first. But I'd encourage you to stick with it for a while to see if you do start to get it. Or come back to it when you feel compelled, if you feel compelled in the future. Eckhart Tolle's work is the best spiritual awakening information out there, in my opinion. So the other one I would recommend is Kim Eng. Kim Eng is Eckhart Tolle's partner and her few videos on his channel are absolutely brilliant. Her explanation of how to deal and move through and process trauma give really practical advice that goes really deep. A lot of information about getting over and releasing old pain is very superficial. You may have found that that it means, and it means that we're kind of left with a sense of emptiness or like an incompletion. Kim Eng addresses the trauma on a physical, emotional and spiritual level so that the releasing and the healing is really deep. So I would encourage you to check out the, her YouTube videos, which are on Eckhart Tolle's channel. Guys, I hope this information was helpful to you too today. Do remember, as I've said many times, I'm not an expert. All I'm doing is sharing my experience of how I finally released my so-called unresolved trauma 
um, in the hope that one or two of you who are in a similar position where you've done all the therapy, you've done all the work that you're supposed to do and it's still not shifting and I'm hoping that one or two of you out there will try this and find that it works for you too. Loads of love guys, have an amazing week and I'll see you on the next podcast.